Hello, and welcome to the online presentation of University Career Services Mingling Etiquette, Hone Your Social Graces. In this presentation, we will be covering conversation and mingling skills, reception etiquette, basic dining etiquette, as well as a few other professional courtesies, and we'll end with some tips on professional dress. First up, receptions. For food at receptions, you should take them from the tray with utensils when offered. It is, however, acceptable to eat finger foods with your fingers. That's about all you should plan to do with your fingers. Don't lick them. Use a napkin. Think ahead of time about how you're going to be juggling your food, drink, and handshakes, because when it comes down to it, you should always prioritize people over food. Don't drink through the tiny straw. You may as well envision it as simply a stick. It should only be used for stirring. Plan to leave your pre-dinner cocktail glass in any logical place other than taking it to the dinner table. Speaking of juggling food and drink while making your introductions, you will not likely be offered dishes with notches or holding slots for your beverage, and you should most certainly not plan to bring your own. You should plan to either hold the glass with your thumb and forefinger while balancing the plate with your remaining three fingers, as shown here with the paper plate and plastic cup, or you should balance the stemware between the fingers of a flat hand with the palm facing up, then using your thumb to steady a plate resting on the rest of your outstretched fingers. This keeps one hand open at all time for introductions. Now as far as those introductions go, remember you should always take the initiative. Don't fret too much if you have forgotten a name, and certainly don't try too hard to finesse it if this is not a social strong suit of yours. One way to give a personal touch is to tell them that their face is familiar, but you just can't place their name. Please remind you. However, this should only be done if you have actually met the person before. For the order of introductions, the traditional deference is, of course, age, rank, senior members within the company, followed by the introduction of outsiders, namely if you have a guest, then would be the time. For introducing yourself, there is the one-minute commercial. You may have heard it commonly referred to here at UCS as the elevator pitch. And then there is beyond the one-minute commercial with some more in-depth discussions. When shaking hands, be firm but not crushing. You will not gain extra respect by hurting them. Maintain eye contact when you are shaking their hand for a couple of seconds. If you are wearing a name tag, wherever you are right now, I want you to reach out your hand or visualize reaching out your hand. And then imagine from that handshake a line of sight moving all the way up your arm to about your shoulder. A few inches inward of that is where the name tag should go because the other person should follow from the juncture of your handshake up to your name tag with their line of sight seamlessly. This goes without saying, but if you are under 21, do not imbibe under any circumstances. If you wish not to drink at a company function or interview or other reception, it is perfectly fine to say, oh no thank you, I don't drink. Have a plan going into it beforehand. Be polite but firm. It's fine to prepare an excuse. I'm driving. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Or simply leaving it as a matter of fact, none for me tonight. No, thank you. I don't drink. As long as you treat it as such, others will likely follow your lead. Those who don't are already raising red flags for you. Mingling tips. Being pleasant. Keeping it light and positive. Avoid complaining and avoid discussing politics, religion, sex, or money. And in this part of the country, probably don't talk about college football during Rivalry Week or college basketball at all. Mingling will vary by culture, so it pays to do your homework if you are interacting outside of your own culture or comfort zone. In the U.S., mingling generally has three distinct sections, breaking the ice, digging deeper, and exiting with style, all three of which will be discussed in a little bit more detail. Listen as much as you speak and speak as much as you listen. There's the old saying that there is a difference between listening and simply waiting for your turn to talk. For breaking the ice, the first part of mingling, prepare and use three positive opening lines. There's almost always food at the reception. Be prepared to talk about what your favorite is and why. Talk about the host, the guest, or the VIP of the event. Talk about the event itself. 
It's always a great idea to discuss the surrounding city or region, particularly if you're in an unfamiliar place and you want to get some tips on sightseeing from the natives. Weather, while cliche, is always a go-to. For digging deeper, discuss slightly deeper topics. Ask open-ended questions a little bit more than yes, no. Only offer personal information that you are willing to discuss. Talk about the industry or the organization. Beforehand, prepare and use three continuing questions. Talk about your interests or hobbies, vacations or travel, what you did last weekend, what you plan for the upcoming holidays or break. Pop culture, there's generally that big show that everybody's talking about. Know a little bit about it. Hope other people in the room do too. You're always welcome to discuss your professional interests if this is a work-related event. Exiting with style. When to exit the conversation is when you have completed that talk or if your group is dwindling. This is when that awkward moment hits when everybody stares at their shoes or their hands. Make your exits. Make your excuses. You need to circulate, so go talk to someone else. When to exit at the reception. Also, when you have completed the conversation, if the entire group is dwindling, this is not the time to close down the venue. Don't make others feel awkward by waiting on you. We'll now discuss a few basic dining etiquette rules. Remember, these rules are really intended to make people feel comfortable, and it is about 90% common sense. When in doubt, watch and wait what others do. At restaurants, consider the price. This is not the time to display your affinity for fine lobster and steak. Defer to the host if they intend to serve as liaison between you and your server. They may have a limited or a pre-fee menu for this particular event. Avoid ordering messy foods. Now, these are the commonsensical ones we think about pasta or barbecue ribs. But when's the last time you were really able to eat something deep fried easily or handheld like a burger easily? Get something that you can cut cleanly and pick up plainly. Do not complain needlessly about your food or the service. If you pay for your own dinner, tip at least 15%. A good rule of thumb to think about is that these are generally restaurants that these companies go to frequently, so they more than likely have a relationship and are more than likely going to have some chatter. At the table do, thank your server. Relate meal concerns to the server or host. Now this is not complaining and this is not being picky. This is discussing food allergies or the like. Eat in small bites so you can respond to conversation more quickly. And utilize the mingling skills we discussed earlier. While they were primarily designed for receptions, many of these will easily transfer tabletop. At the table, do not talk with your mouth full. Chew with your mouth open. Touch your food with your fingers. This is not acceptable at the table. Do not use your napkin as a handkerchief. This means no nose blowing at the table. Do not mix or mash food on your plate. Don't dunk your foods, so maybe not that roast beef sandwich with the au jus. Do not wave your utensils while talking. Gesticulating wildly is doing no one any favors, particularly if you end up cutting your fellow table mates. Don't speak for so long to someone far away that you make someone lean out of the way or sit quietly. And don't reach for something someone else could more easily get for you. At the table, don't eat quickly in big cheek bulging bites. I know you want to finish quickly so that you continue the conversation, but this can also be managed by smaller bites and conversation in between. Don't season the food before tasting. This means not picking up the salt and dousing your plate right away. That would include hot sauce. Don't try or ask to try someone else's food. This is not a caring means sharing opportunity. Do not rummage through the dish for the best portion. This is particularly true of family-style dining restaurants. Just take what is closest to you or on the top of the serving tray. Don't wear hats at the table. Don't push the plate away when finished. If any of you may have uh, waited tables at any point in your career history, you're going to want to fight the urge to stack the dishes to make it easier for your server at the end of a meal. Do not perform personal grooming tasks. This is the perfect time to excuse yourself from the table if you need to check and make sure there's no food in your teeth. And most importantly, don't worry about anyone else's manners. Trust me, they are more worried about their own without having you to do it for them. 
If you notice that you are doing something differently from all of the others, quietly remedy it and move on without comment. It's always nice to make a show of, oh, ha ha, I did this wrong. Look at me now, I'm doing this right. Resist that urge, just start doing it right. If this is a dining interview, hopefully you know in advance, hopefully this hasn't been sprung on you, prepare as if it were an interview in the office. Follow your dining cues from the host or hostess. Absolutely no gift is required for a business dining interview. And please remember that this is an interview regardless of how casual your dining environment may be. For technology, turn off telephones when in a professional setting, unless you absolutely cannot due to life or death circumstances, and then explain why in advance. No phones means also no text messaging and no emailing. The last few slides will include some business attire for professional or interview and business casual. Here are some suggestions for ladies. And here are some suggestions for our gentlemen. Remember that most of these slides exist on the University Career Services website and they are frequently on display in the kiosks in our office if you're here for an appointment or for drop-ins. Here is business casual attire for ladies. And again, some business casual attire suggestions for gentlemen. Finally, please remember that politeness and consideration for others is like investing pennies and getting dollars back. Here is our pertinent social media and contact info. Thank you for your time.